glad that you chose to join us tonight. I'm Pastor Randy Richardson with the Bible Heritage Church in uh, Waycross, Georgia. We're going to sing uh, three songs and then we're going to get right into a study in the Word in 1 Peter. First song I want to do is a uh, song that says, uh, uh, When I Lay My Heavy Burdens Down. And I hope if you've got any burdens tonight, you're going to make a choice to lay them down. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
this last song we're going to do just before we minister in the word is a song I hope you all know. It's when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Praise the Lord. Peter. If you have your Bibles with you, just uh, grab it and turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 13. On Wednesday nights, we're in a study in the book of 1 Peter. We entitled this message, Get a Hold of Yourself. Get a Hold of Yourself. When the people of God are in a crisis, we should act different than the world. When all the world is falling apart, we should have it together. When all seems like it's doom and gloom, we should be the ones that are cheering the, the banner and raising the banner and saying, we're going to make it, bless God, hallelujah. The people of God that Peter was writing to were in a crisis. They were under persecution. They had seen their brothers, their sisters, their parents, loved ones, friends, co-workers sewn into animal skins and fed to the wild animals, put in the arenas for the uh, enjoyment of the Roman uh, citizens, and, and they were eaten alive, and, and they saw their friends, neighbors, and, and relatives, their children, their parents, their brother, their sister burned alive. Uh, just to keep the city lit up at night. And, and so these people uh, didn't feel safe. They, they, they had lost their jobs. They, they were not able to say the name of Jesus openly. They had to live underground per se. And, and, and they lost uh, their sense of, of purpose and, and, and social standing and so on and so forth. Well, they had a Savior that helped them through the difficult times that they were living in. It's not easy to hold it together. Sometimes it's easy to just let your mind wander and your emotions go here and there and go crazy in a crisis. 
ever been to a, one of the movies or watched a television program where somebody was just screaming or they were having a hissy fit or they were just uh, out of control and, and somebody just slapped them side the face and said, get it together. Get a hold of yourself. Well, tonight I hope we don't have to slap anybody, but I do hope that we can get a hold of ourselves if we've allowed ourselves to get out of control, if we've allowed fear and worry to get a hold of us and to drive us to make foolish choices and foolish decisions. We've seen hysteria in so many places uh, with, with this virus, so many people that are just carrying on and, and, and acting the fool. Um, it's, it's insane to me. And God's people should be the ones that everybody are looking at and saying, you know what, the, they're, they're quiet, they're, they're peaceful, they're doing everything the right way. A key factor that creates hysteria around pandemics is in the, the population's ability to keep it together, to remain calm and to look at the situation logically and with no blurred vision, focused, not full of anxiety and fear. If you're careful or if you're not careful and you keep uh, news on 24 7 you're going to find your spirit is full of fear you're going to find yourself full of frustration and anxiety so i encourage you to um, not watch all that you know watch the television when it's the uh, uh, the news when it's time for the president or the governor of our state to to speak but other than that you know, I, I wouldn't watch too much news because it can get you in a depressed state. I have to admit, when this pandemic first started, I immediately got the flu. And that wasn't the, the uh, COVID-19, I don't think. But I, I, I went to the doctor because I had an ear infection. I, I, I had some pain in my ear. And so I went to the doctor and I was thinking he was just going to give me some augmenting and it was going to go home and and be okay, you know. And uh, when I got there, he said, oh, you have a fever. And and uh, I didn't feel feverish, but I had a fever. And he said, uh, how long you had a fever? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, I'll start keeping a rec record of it. And for about a week, I kept a fever. I took the antibiotics that they gave me. And, and uh, he, I said, do you think I have this COVID-19? And he said, no, I don't, I don't think so. And uh, he said, and he tested me for the flu, and I didn't, I didn't even test positive for the flu. I think, again, I just had an ear infection. But boy, did my mind go to whirling. My mind began to think, oh my goodness, because I'm diabetic and because I have other health issues, well, I, I, I'm going to get it. And, and, and fear began to grip my soul, and, and I began to, to panic and my mind went about a hundred miles per hour as I was racing about thinking about this poor church is going to have to find a new pastor after I just got here and, and, and my wife's going to have to move out of the parsonage and the kids are going to have to change schools and you know it's just not going to be a good situation. Lord I can't die right now. It's not convenient <laughs> as if there's ever a convenient time to die. But the devil will convince you that you're going to die. He'll convince you that you're going to go bankrupt. He's going to convince you that you're, you're not going to make it financially, that you're going to lose your home, that you're going to lose your car, that you're going to lose your husband or wife, or that your children are going to die. And he, he, he puts all kinds of negative thoughts in your mind. And so what you have to do is you have to come against those thoughts and cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Did God tell you you were going to die? I don't think so. Uh, rare if, if, if it ever happens, uh, and, and I'm sure it probably does, but it, again, it's rare. But unless the Lord tells you, and, and you know what? You're his child, and God will warn you. He will prepare you about things that happen in your life. If you live close enough to him and seek his face and seek him, he said he doesn't hold back wisdom to those that 
that uh, desire it? Well, all of this chaos I'm talking about that I went through and the chaos that we've experienced since this COVID-19 breakout is the same type of experience that our readers are going through in 1 Peter chapter 1. They have gone through some horrible, horrible times. And people were scared. They felt threatened. There was uncertainty in their lifestyles. Their, their life was completely different than it used to be. And that's what's hard for us today. It's because we're so used to our life being in certain patterns and certain things and going to eat at certain places on certain days of the week and so on. And, and now we're limited in those areas. Well, now in verse 13, this is what Peter says for God's people to do when they find themselves in chaos or in confusion or in a pandemic, if you please. He said in 1 Peter 1, 13, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that's to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I always was taught whenever there is a therefore or wherefore, we have to ask ourselves, what is it there for? And we know because of the promises of verses 3 through 12, that there is a heavenly inheritance. We were singing tonight about heaven. We were singing about the joy of when we get to heaven, there'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more difficulties. And because of this heavenly inheritance, we now have the promise of what he says in verse 13. He tells us to do three things basic things in this one little verse. He says the first thing that you need to do in the time of chaos and uncertainty is gird up the loins of your minds. Secondly, he said, I want you to be sober. And the third thing, he said, I want you to rest your hope fully upon the grace that's to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When we get to heaven, glory to God. So let me go through these three things briefly. Number one, gird up the loins of your mind. On Facebook, I, I posted earlier today uh, a little illustration uh, that uh, someone drew up of a man in Bible times that was instructed to gird up his loins. They wore tunics that went down to their ankles. And if you were going to run or fight or you were going to be in any kind of battle or you were in a hurry and you needed to run, you couldn't do it in a tunic. It's kind of like running in a long dress. And so what they would do is they'd pull that bottom of that tunic up and uh, just above their knees and they would take uh, each side and pull it around and then they would tuck it underneath their legs and pull it back around themselves and tie it off under their belt that they wore right there uh, in their uh, midriff area. And so when a man would, uh, needed to go to war or to run, he would gird up his tunic, and then he could run with all ease. He could fight. His weapon that might be in his belt was easily accessible. He might pull out a knife or a sword, and then he was ready for action. Well... He said, I want you to gird up your mind. Well, how can you gird up your mind? I know you can take your tunic and pull it around, but what he was saying was, just like a man needed to gird up his loin area and pull all of his tunic up into his belt area so that he could not be inhibited in any way to fight, you and I need to get our minds girded up. We need to get prepared for battle. We need to get our minds ready for warfare. We need to get our minds ready to overcome anything the enemy has for us. We need to get our minds prepared to handle what the devil wants to throw at us. The word says, that, or, or, or the, we know that the mind is the devil's play yard. 
the devil's play yard. It's the mind that runs crazy. It's the mind that runs wild. It's the mind that leans towards a carnal, carnal thinking and not a spiritual thinking. And we wind up reacting instead of responding calmly through chaos and uncertainty in the flesh. And we make all kind of mistakes. Whereas if we would just take a step back, take a deep breath and just say, Father, show me what you want me to learn through this situation. Show me how to act. Teach me what I'm supposed to do. Guide me and direct me. And I know you'll do it. We get our news from the Holy Ghost. We get our news from the Holy Spirit. He's the one that teaches us all truth. Now, I appreciate so much doctors. I appreciate, I go to them. I, I honor them. I respect them. But a doctor's word is not my final authority. A doctor tells me something. I'll take his prescription. I'll put it in my, my uh, desk. And then I'll pray. And I'll say, Father, is this something that you want me to take? And I wait until I get the peace of God to flood my soul before I take that prescription. I want to make sure that God agrees with that doctor on the diagnosis he's given me. A lawyer tells you something and oh, you panic because you've got to go to court. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you'll just seek the face of God and say, God, what do I do here? And the Lord will give you a word of wisdom and he'll share with you the outcome. He'll share with you what he's going to do. He might even just simply say, trust me, I got this. Just walk with me through this storm. The president, Congress, politicians in general can say this and they can say that and, and those that are uh, the, the skeptics will, will talk and they'll say, oh, well, I, I think doom and gloom here and doom and gloom there. And We don't listen to all that. We listen to the voice of the Spirit of God. Just like during the time of, of Joseph in the, in the book of Genesis, jo Joseph listened to the Holy Spirit of God and the Spirit of God revealed to him there was going to be feast for seven years and then famine for seven years. <coughs> we need to make sure that we are listening to the Lord and that we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. There are so many conspiracy theories out there today. They're telling you this and they're telling you that. And you hear this and you hear that. And, 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 and I'm here to tell you, if you're saved, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit has come to live on the inside of you. If you've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost where he floods over you, comes upon you, then you have no excuse for not hearing the voice of the Spirit of God. We have that knower in us. It's our spirit man. It's not that soulish man. It's the spirit man that listens to God. And in my knower, my common sense, my spirit man, the Holy Spirit speaks to that spirit and lets me know, confirms in my heart when something is real or when something is not real. I believe this virus is real. I, I, I don't think that the government concocted it and that, you know, I, I don't believe any of those conspiracy theories. I just believe that God is using this virus He's using this virus to hopefully wake up the church, to hopefully wake up the world. You know, uh, the main thing that, I, that, that came to my mind as, as I was thinking about this is that during this time, a lot of people have been out of work. They've had time to seek the Lord. They've had time to listen to more preaching on the Internet, music, Take time to get closer to the family. See the hand of the Lord moving in the midst of all of this situation. I've seen more churches that have never been online come online. And preachers that have never went outside the doors of their church to share the message of Jesus Christ are now on the internet. 
And this gospel is reaching unchurched people like never before. It's reaching backsliders. It's reaching people that have steered away from the Lord. And I believe that the gospel on, is on the internet more now than ever. And what does the word say in Matthew 24, 14? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. So we're living near the end of time. And so this pandemic has allowed the gospel to get preached in more places than we ever have in the past. We're so busy reacting to the latest news broadcast. We're busy reacting so much that we miss the Lord and what he's up to in the midst of a crisis. So he says, gird up the loins of your mind. Get your mind ready to be attacked by the enemy and to defeat the enemy because greater is he that lives in you than he that's in the world. Praise the Lord. Second thing he says is to, in a crisis or chaos is be sober. What does this word sober mean? When we think of something, somebody that's sober, we, we think of somebody that doesn't drink alcohol, but that's not what this sober uh, intends. It means to be calm and collected in spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, or or not influenced by strong emotion, and so able to be rational and impartial, circumspect. In other words, careful to consider all circumstances and possible consequences. See, that's a lot of things we don't normally do. We don't consider the consequences of our actions or even our thought processes. But in the midst of of trouble and crisis and chaos. We're to be calm and collected in spirit. We're to get a hold of ourselves. We're to get a hold of ourselves. Are you calm? Are you panicking at every report that you listen to? David wrote in Psalm 61 2, he said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. When I feel like I'm going to cave in with the pressure or the uncertainty. I go to the rock, that's Jesus, and I hold on to him and I say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go because I need your touch to give me peace in the midst of this storm. When I'm spinning out of control, lead me back to your word, Lord. Lead me back to your word. Let me get in the pages of this book let me get back in my prayer closet. Let me get back into my worship and praise. Let me spend some time with the Lord. What's the opposite of sober? It's drunk. A drunk person is out of control. They say things they don't want to say. They think things they shouldn't think. They do things they shouldn't do. They have no control over their bodily functions, over how walking and talking and and on and on, because they've gotten under the influence of alcohol, alcohol has taken over their behavior. Well, you have to stop consuming alcohol and wait for the alcohol to leave your bloodstream for your crisis to be over. Well, if you'll just stop listening to all that negativity, if you'll stop listening to the lies of the devil, if you'll get your head off or, or your eyes off of CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and NBC and CBS and ABC and XYZ and all these other news agencies and get your mind in the Lord. Get your mind focused on God and what he wants to say to your heart. Then all that panic and all that fear will leave you just like the alcohol leaves the blood over a period of time. Praise the Lord. For those of you who get your information from Facebook, let me say this. Stop. Glance at it if you will, but just use your finger and keep scrolling on down. Use that mouse on that keyboard.
keypad or on your phone, just scroll up with your finger. You see it is going to be negativity, just go on to the next one because you don't need to fill your mind with all of that. Third and last thing that Peter says in a crisis that we're to do is to rest your hope. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we have a hope. His name is Jesus, and Jesus is the only hope for America. Jesus is the only hope for the world, and he's the only hope for you and for me. Praise the Lord. We sing songs about heaven. We sing songs about the, how the Lord saved us. And we need to rest in our hope. Rest in our hope. We've got a hope uh, for salvation. And let me just say, if the very worst case scenario happened and I die, I got hope. Because when I die, I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to be whole in my mind, whole in my body, whole in my emotions. I'm going to have no more bills, praise the Lord. Everything is going to be glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. In the Old Testament, we have the story in 1 Samuel chapter 30 when the Amalekites came along and they stole all the wives of the people of the city of Ziklag. Well, the people were so grieved and so uh, distraught and they were so caught up in reacting. They wanted to go get their wives and children back. They wanted to, to go get vengeance. They wanted to react. But in fact, they even got to the place where it says in, in verse number 6 of chapter 30 of 1 Samuel, Now David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. They were blaming the leader for the problem. It wasn't David's fault. But they were blaming anybody and everybody that they could because they were hurting and hurting people will act crazy. People that are scared will act crazy. And he says, For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all, every man for his sons and his daughters, but here's what David did. But David strengthened himself, or as the King James Version says, he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Folks, when all the chaos goes on, you've got to remember you've got a hope. You've got a, a life preserver. You've got a lifeline. You've got a capability to go to someone that's higher than you that can give you the strength that you need to make it through whatever it is that you're going through. It's time we encourage ourselves in the Lord and stop filling our minds with all this garbage. Stop falling apart and panicking. Stop yielding to fear. Franklin Roosevelt, back in the Depression, in one of the greatest hardship times in this country, he made a statement that's absolutely true for today. He said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So when we get into a difficult situation, a time of chaos, a time of uncertainty, it's time to get a hold of God. David wrote in Psalm 31, 24, be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. All you who hope in the Lord. If you hope in the Lord, you've got hope. Psalm 146, 5, Happy is he who's God, the God of Jacob, for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Romans 15, 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is your hope in the Lord tonight? Now, I, I, I'm sure that you believe that, but are you practicing that? Is your hope really in the Lord? Because if it is, you'll have a peace, you'll have a calm. All the external things can be going on, and, 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 and you, everybody else is worried to death, but you'll just be calm because you know God. And you know God's got it under control no matter what happens. It's going to be for your good and his glory.
I want us to pray tonight that God will give us the confidence to trust him. We used to sing that song, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Let's trust him more. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people tonight that, Lord God, you will give them the strength to carry on through this time of crisis. I pray for those that don't have their jobs that you will begin to provide for them in miraculous ways. Father, you're our source. We trust in you. We don't trust in the government. We don't trust in our employer. We trust in you. And you take care of us. You make sure that we're okay. And so, Lord, we give you our health. We give you our mental well-being. We give you our finances. We give you our homes, our cars, our children, our grandchildren, our husbands, wives, our relatives. We trust you, Lord, and we give you everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining with us. Join back with us uh, this coming Sunday morning at 11 o'clock on uh, Facebook Live or around 12, 12, 15. It'll be posted to uh, YouTube and uh, we'll uh, be glad to have you join us. God bless you and be blessed.